South Beach Diet Review and Beginner's Guide The South Beach Diet has been popular for over a decade. It's a lower-carb diet that has been credited with producing rapid weight loss without hunger, all while promoting heart health. On the other hand, it's also been criticized for being a restrictive fad diet. This video provides a detailed review of the South Beach Diet, including its benefits, downsides, safety, and sustainability. What is the South Beach Diet? The South Beach Diet was created in the mid-1990s by Dr. Arthur Agatson, a Florida-based cardiologist. His work in heart disease research led to the development of the Agatson score, which measures the amount of calcium in the coronary arteries. According to published interviews, Dr. Agatson observed that patients on the Atkins diet were losing weight and belly fat, while those on low-fat, high-carb diets were struggling to achieve results. However, he was uncomfortable with the high amount of saturated fat allowed on the Atkins diet, especially for people with heart disease. In addition, he didn't believe in restricting high-fiber foods with good carbs, like fruit and whole grains. Dr. Agatson wanted to create a diet that allowed overweight, diabetic, and pre-diabetic individuals to easily lose weight and reduce their risk of heart disease. Therefore, he developed the South Beach Diet, which is rich in low glycemic index carbs, lean proteins, and unsaturated fats. After losing weight and belly fat when he tried the diet out on himself, he began prescribing it to his patients, who reported similar results. How does the South Beach Diet work? The South Beach Diet has three different phases, two for weight loss and a third for weight maintenance. Phase 1 Phase 1 lasts 14 days. It's considered the strictest phase because it limits fruit, grains, and other higher carb foods to decrease blood sugar and insulin levels, stabilize hunger and reduce cravings. Most people can expect to lose 8 to 13 pounds, 3.5 to 6 kilograms, of body weight during this phase. During phase 1, you consume 3 meals per day composed of lean protein, non-starchy vegetables and small amounts of healthy fat and legumes. In addition, you consume two mandatory snacks per day, preferably a combination of lean protein and vegetables. Phase 2 This phase begins on day 15 and should be maintained for as many weeks as necessary to achieve your goal weight. You can expect to lose 1 to 2 pounds, 0.5 to 1 kilogram, per week during this phase, on average. During phase 2, all foods from phase 1 are allowed, plus limited portions of fruit and good carbs, such as whole grains and certain types of alcohol. Phase 3 Once you achieve your target weight, you advance to Phase 3. In this stage, although the Phase 2 guidelines should be the basis for your lifestyle, occasional treats are allowed and no foods are truly off-limits. However, if you overindulge and start putting on weight, Dr. Agatson recommends returning to Phase 1 for 1-2 to two weeks before returning to Phase 3. In the South Beach Diet Supercharged, Dr. Agatson also recommends regular exercise and provides a three-phase fitness program to accompany the diet phases. Phase 1, Foods to Include Please note that the guidelines for all phases are from the book, The South Beach Diet Supercharged. The guidelines on the South Beach Diet website may be different. Lean Protein Although portions aren't limited, the diet recommends slowly consuming a small portion and returning for seconds if you are still hungry. Examples of Lean Protein Lean Beef, Pork, Lamb, Veal, and Game Skinless Chicken and Turkey Breast Fish and Shellfish Turkey Bacon and Pepperoni Eggs and Egg Whites Soy-Based Meat Substitutes Low-Fat Hard Cheese, Ricotta Cheese, and Cottage Cheese Buttermilk, Low-Fat Milk, Plain or Greek Yogurt, Kefir, and Soy Milk, Limited to 2 Cups, 473 milliliters daily. Non-starchy vegetables. Consume a minimum of four and a half cups daily. All vegetables are allowed except beets, carrots, corn, turnips, yams, peas, white potatoes, and most types of winter squash. Legumes. Limit these to one third dash half cup per day, cooked, unless otherwise noted. Examples of legumes. Black beans, kidney beans, pinto beans, navy beans, garbanzo beans, and other bean varieties. Split peas and black-eyed peas. Lentils. Edamame and soybeans. Hummus, limited to one quarter cup. 
Nuts and seeds. Limit these to 1 ounce, 28 grams, per day. Examples of nuts and seeds. Almonds, cashews, macadamias, pecans, pistachios, walnuts, and other nuts. Nut butter, limited to 2 tablespoons. Flax seeds, chia seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, and other seeds. Oils and fats. Limited to 2 tablespoons of oil per day. Monounsaturated oils are encouraged. Examples of oils and fats. Monounsaturated oils, such as olive, canola, macadamia, and avocado oils. Vegetable and seed oils, such as corn, flaxseed, grapeseed, peanut, safflower, sesame, and soybean oil. Alternative fat choices. Each serving is equivalent to 2 tablespoons of healthy oils. Examples of alternative fat. Avocado, limited to two-thirds of one fruit. Trans-fat-free margarine, limited to two tablespoons. Low-fat mayonnaise, limited to two tablespoons. Regular mayonnaise, limited to one tablespoon. Salad dressing with less than three grams sugar, limited to two tablespoons. Olives, limited to 20 to 30, depending on size. Sweet treats. Limit consumption to 100 calories or fewer per day. Examples of sweet treats. Sugar-free or unsweetened cocoa or chocolate syrup. Sugar-free gelatin, jams, and jellies. Sugar-free candies, popsicles, or gum. Sugar substitutes, including stevia, artificial sweeteners, and sugar alcohols like xylitol and erythritol. Condiments. You may eat unlimited quantities of these foods unless otherwise noted. Examples of condiments Broth Herbs, spices, horseradish, mustard, lemon juice or salsa All vinegar, with balsamic limited to 1 tablespoon Light coconut milk, limited 1 quarter cup, 59 milliliters Soy sauce, steak sauce or miso, limited to 1 and a half teaspoon, 7 milliliters Cream, whole milk or half and half, limited to 1 tablespoon. Light sour cream or cream cheese, limited to 2 tablespoons. Light whipped topping, limited to 2 tablespoons. Beverages. You may drink unlimited quantities of these beverages, although drinking your caffeine in moderation is advised. Examples of beverages. Coffee, regular or decaffeinated. Tea, regular, decaffeinated, or herbal. Sugar-free sodas. Sugar-free drink mixes. Tomato juice or vegetable juice. Phase 1, Foods to Avoid. Certain fatty foods and those high in carbs, including fruits and grains, are not allowed in Phase 1. These include Fatty meat and poultry. Butter and coconut oil. Whole milk. Foods made with refined sugar. Honey, maple syrup, and agave nectar. Grains. All fruits and fruit juice. Beets, carrots, corn, turnips, yams, peas, white potatoes, and winter squash. Phases 2 and 3, foods to include. Phase 2 includes all phase 1 foods and gradually adds in higher carb foods, beginning with one daily serving of fruit and whole grains or starchy vegetables for the first week. On the 14th day of phase 2 and thereafter, you may consume up to 3 servings of fruit and 4 servings of whole grains and starchy vegetables per day. Once you've achieved your goal weight, you move to phase 3 for maintenance. During this phase, you should generally follow the guidelines from phase 2. However, you can include treat foods occasionally, since no foods are completely off-limits. Fruits. Consume 1 to 3 servings per day. All fresh and frozen fruits are allowed except dates, figs, pineapple, raisins, and watermelon. A serving size is one small piece of fruit, half a grapefruit, or three quarters cup, about 115 grams, of berries, cherries, or grapes. Whole grains and starchy vegetables. Consume one to four servings per day. Peas. Rutabaga. Sweet potatoes and yams. Turnips. Winter squash, limited to 3 quarters cup. Whole grain hot cereal. Whole grain cold cereal, limited to 1 cup. Whole grain bread. Brown or wild rice. 
whole grain pasta, quinoa, couscous, or farro. Taro, limited to one third cup. Popcorn, limited to three cups. Whole grain bagel, limited to half small. Pita bread, limited to half pita. Corn or whole grain tortilla, limited to one small. Phases two and three, foods to avoid. Phase two of the South Beach diet discourages intake of fatty meats, saturated fat, and foods high in refined or natural sugar. Try to avoid fatty meat and poultry, butter and coconut oil, whole milk, foods made with refined flour or sugar, honey, maple syrup, agave nectar, fruit juice, beets, corn, and white potatoes, dates, figs, pineapple, raisins, and watermelon. Sample days on the diet. Here are sample meal plans for phase one and phase two of the South Beach diet to give you a snapshot of what a typical day might look like. Phase one sample day. Breakfast, three eggs and one cup kale cooked with one teaspoon of olive oil. Snack, one ounce, 28 grams, string cheese with bell pepper slices. Lunch, roasted salmon and asparagus salad with mustard vinaigrette. Snack, celery sticks with two teaspoons peanut butter. Dinner, lean steak with broccoli. Phase two sample day. Breakfast, quick and easy peanut butter oatmeal. Snack, one cup cucumber slices with one quarter cup hummus. Lunch, apple walnut chicken salad. Snack, cottage cheese with cherry tomatoes. Dinner, pork fajitas with one third cup guacamole. There are hundreds of recipes available for all three phases of the South Beach diet, including many with ingredients that are cheap, tasty, and easy to find. Benefits of the South Beach Diet There are several benefits of the South Beach Diet, including its ability to produce weight loss without hunger. Research, including an analysis of 24 studies, has consistently shown that high-protein, low-carb diets are effective for weight loss. Part of this is due to protein's ability to increase your metabolic rate. In addition, protein helps modify hormone levels that reduce hunger and promote fullness, so you end up naturally eating less. What's more, gradually adding small amounts of healthy carbs back into your diet may promote continued weight loss in some people and make it easier for them to stick to the diet long term. In one study, overweight and obese people with metabolic syndrome followed the South Beach diet for 12 weeks. By the end of the study, they had lost 11 pounds, 5.2 kilograms, and 2 inches, 5.1 centimeters, from around their waists, on average. They also experienced significant decreases in fasting insulin and an increase in the fullness hormone CCK. The South Beach diet encourages a high intake of fatty fish like salmon and other foods that fight inflammation, such as leafy greens and cruciferous veggies. In addition, it recommends dieters regularly consume eggs, nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil, and other foods that have been shown to protect heart health. The book makes meal planning easy and pleasurable by providing two weeks of sample menus and recipes for each phase. There are also hundreds of recipes available online for phase one and phase two meals. Downsides of the South Beach Diet Unfortunately, the South Beach Diet also has a couple of drawbacks. The main issue is that it may be overly restrictive with respect to the amounts and types of fats allowed. In addition, it allows potentially harmful types of fat, such as soybean oil and safflower oil, which are extremely high in omega-6 fatty acids. Although it's important to get some omega-6 fats in your diet, if you're like most people, you probably already get far more than you need. In contrast, if you eat a Western diet, you likely get too little of the anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats found in fatty fish like salmon, sardines, and mackerel. Consuming a high ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fats has been linked to inflammation, heart disease, and other health problems. In contrast, butter and coconut oil aren't included in the South Beach diet because they are high in saturated fat. However, coconut oil has been credited with several health benefits, including weight loss, a reduction in belly fat, and better heart health markers in overweight and obese adults. In addition, most comprehensive reviews of studies have found no association between saturated fat intake and an increased risk of heart disease. On the other hand, other large reviews have found that replacing a portion of saturated fat with unsaturated fat could potentially reduce the risk of heart disease. 
Overall, choosing less processed fat and eating plenty of fish high in omega-3 fats may be more important for heart health than restricting saturated fat. Is the South Beach diet safe and sustainable? The South Beach diet is a healthy way of eating that is far lower in carbs than conventional low-fat diets. It also encourages dieters to eat mainly unprocessed foods, liberal amounts of vegetables, and healthy, high-fiber carb sources. However, the diet allows processed vegetable oils, which could pose health risks. Nevertheless, you can avoid this drawback by choosing unprocessed monounsaturated fats like extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil or macadamia oil instead. All this being said, the South Beach diet is likely a sustainable way of eating. Many people have reported losing weight and keeping it off by following the diet. Yet in the end, the most effective diet for weight loss is whichever one you can easily stick with long term.